So I just wanted to, I'm excited because I have been really digging into the book of John. Um, and in chapter 11, I'm beyond chapter 11, but I just, I don't know. I just wanted to tell you guys about this. So in chapter 11, um, Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, he brought the scene that, it, that unfolded. Now this is where, um, Yeshua raised Lazarus from the dead, but he really brought this chapter to life for me. So in the beginning, it starts off with Jesus, Yeshua and his, um, disciples. They're in Jerusalem and Mary, Martha and Lazarus live in Bethany. Bethany is literally two miles away from Jerusalem. And Mary and Martha send word to Yeshua that Lazarus is sick. And <laughs> after they send word to him, um, and they specifically said, Lazarus, whom you love, is sick. So after this happens, he's like, bets. So we're going to wait here a few days. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm sorry, I'm trying to go back. Anyway, I, I was trying to see how many days he said he was going to wait. Okay, so when he hears that he was sick, he stays two more days. That, that's what I was trying to look for. He stays two more days after he he hears that Lazarus is sick. So now, mind you, you got to you got to take into account the time it took to get the message to Yeshua, which probably wasn't too long because it was two miles away. But then he waits two more days after he gets the message. So when he he tells his um, disciples that, yo, you know, Lazarus is sleeping. They're like, well, if he's if he's sick and sleeping, he'll, he'll get better. And he's like, no, he's dead. He's dead. And they're like, well, you know, the Jews are trying to kill you. He's like, listen, if you walk in darkness, you don't understand these things we got going on. But you're in the light. Anyway, <laughs> we got to go see Lazarus. So um, and I'm just paraphrasing everything. Go read John chapter 11. So. That he's he, he's just telling them, you know, I'm gl I'm glad for um, your sake that um, you were here with me and I wasn't there so that you would believe. So, you know, he knows that Lazarus is dead at this point in time. So they go into um, Bethany to go see Mary, Martha and dead Lazarus. And Martha meets him first and she comes out and put it into human context okay this woman just lost her brother she sent word to yeshua and in her met in her message that she sent to yeshua it said lazarus was sick so we know that at that time he had not yet died first thing she said to him is lazarus is dead if you had if you had been here like this is a grieving woman now so it's not just lazarus is dead if you had been here like this is a <laughs> lazarus is dead if, if you had been here he wouldn't have died and he's like, yo, <laughs> I got this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take care of it. Do you believe I can do these things? She was like, I can, I believe you. I know who you are. I believe you're the Christ. Yada, yada, yada. So then she goes and she tells Mary that Yeshua is looking for her. Mary has the same reaction. Only hers is on an even grander scale. So not only does Mary come, but the Jews who were around her while she was in mourning, they follow her out as well. And she's, she's got to be hysterical because it said she was weeping. Okay. You have sobbing, which is basically like, <laughs> you have crying, which is the tears. And then you have weeping. Weeping is that ugly cry. Like it comes from your, from your gut, from your soul. It's like your soul is crying. You know what I'm saying? So she's weeping. And so are the Jews that are with her. And she's probably, like I said, hysterical. If you had been here, he wouldn't have died. And just, you know, so this actually moves Yeshua to weep as well. It says Yeshua, well, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. He had that, Jesus had an ugly cry. And they were like, wow, he really did love Lazarus. Look at him. And then some of them were like, well, if he loved him, couldn't he have just kept him from dying? <laughs> so then Yeshua was like, yo, show me where he is. They go to the tomb. He's like, remove the stone. It's like a cave with the stone on, um, with the stone in the entrance. He's like, remove the stone. Mary, Martha's like, wait, he probably stinks because he's been there for four days. And he's like, dude, did you believe what I told you? She's like, yeah. So they remove the stone. He goes to the mouth, calls out Lazarus. There's Lazarus's name. Lazarus comes forth with his grave clothes on. He, um, Yeshua tells them to remove the grave clothes. Doesn't stop there, though. 
some of the Jews believe in Yeshua because of what they just seen, but then some of them are tattletales and they go run and tell the religious leaders, the Pharisees, yo, this dude just did this. Instead of them going, oh my God, this guy was dead and now he's alive again. Let's go see what's going on. They get jealous and they're like, oh, if we let him keep doing this, he's going to take away our favor with the people and the Roman government and then we're going to be a Spitz Creek without a paddle. So we got to kill him. And in chapter 12, you see it, it goes beyond just wanting to kill Yeshua. They also want to put Lazarus back in the grave. <laughs> they want to kill Lazarus. Like they're not just plotting to kill Yeshua anymore. Lazarus's life is a testimony to who Yeshua truly is. Because nowhere else have we truly seen someone else bring someone back to life. Except for with Elijah and Elisha. And even then, we know it wasn't them that brought the people back to life. It was Yahuwah. So they know that this is something that only Yahuwah can do. And they feel threatened. So let's just get rid of the threat. <laughs> but yeah, like, it's just the way he brought it, the way Rock HaKadosh brought it to me, like, as, a, as I was reading it, it was like a scene was unfolding in my head. And I'm like, these women weren't just over here doubting him, like, you ain't coming and fussing at him. They were grieving. <laughs> Their brother was dead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they knew that Jesus loved him. So they're like, well, why did you let him die? He said he stayed two more days after he received the news that Lazarus was dead. And then he said to the disciples before he even got there that Lazarus was dead. And he said it was a good thing that Lazarus had, dead, had died and he wasn't there so that they would believe because he already knew. He said this sickness is not unto death, but it's to glorify. <laughs> It's to glorify God. Go back and read John chapter 11. And when you read the scriptures, remember, these are people. These are real people. If you read it like it's a fictional book, you're going to think that Yeshua is a fictional character. He is a historical figure that really existed in the flesh and still exists in the spirit. These are not fictional characters. This is not a fictional book. This is a, his a history book, okay? I'm just letting you know. When you read it, go back and read it with that lens. Ask Royal Kakadesh to really show you what the scriptures are saying and don't just read it and take it for granted. It was a miracle and we're not going to downgrade that miracle because I ain't seeing none of us bringing folks back from death. And I mean, at the end of the day, a lot of folks have been done died the past two years. I'm just saying. So I ain't seeing none of us resurrecting folks right now. So the miracle is absolutely the main focus. But then what leads up to the miracle and what happens after the miracle is also very important because there it just shows that when you don't want Yeshua, there's no amount of signs, miracles and wonders that he can do that for a person that will cause them to want him, which means that we are we can only lead people to him, but we can't be him for them because even he <laughs> is not wanted by them. And that's going to lead into another video I'm going to make. I don't know if I'm going to make it today or later on this week, but it's talking about the miracles, signs, and wonders that the enemy is able to perform in order to deceive us. Resurrection is not one of them, but there are other miracle signs and wonders that I can show you in scripture that the enemy does perform um, in order to deceive us. And the video that I had made that I talked about in my other video yesterday was basically showing... Um, so the first part of the video was showing Jim Jones accurately prophesying over people, even though it was through the spirit of divination and familiar spirits and healing people. OK, this is the man that killed 909 people at Jonestown, him being one of the 909 people. OK, and that's men, women and children. 909 people. November 18th, 1978. All right. So. He performed miracle signs and wonders, and that is one of the things that caused people to believe that he was sent from Yahuwah. So I hope that I make that video today. If I don't, it'll be later on this week. Oh, y'all willing. <laughs> I love you guys. Until next time, Shalom Malakim.